In this mini lecture, I'm going to talk about choosing a connected learning environment by giving you some examples of what you should be looking for when you're making your selection of an environment to map for assignment one. First, we need to double check we understand what a connected learning environment is. Here's the definition we're working with in this subject. A connected learning environment provides a context, which is usually mostly online, but with possible offline aspects, where a community of active learners can share, curate and produce resources and co-create knowledge on a topic of common interest. We're looking for an environment that supports connected learning. This is an environment that encourages strongly shared culture and practices, varied ways of contributing, high standards and effective ways of providing feedback and help. So how does this relate to the connected learning framework and the features that you're asked to look for and analyse in assignment one? Firstly, our connected learning environment should have a strongly shared culture and practices. This means that the learning is interest driven and that the participants come together with a shared purpose. Secondly, we're looking for an environment that offers varied ways of contributing. When learners are contributing, their learning is production centred and learners are actively involved in creating, experimenting, designing and sharing with others. When the environment is openly networked, learning happens across different settings and spaces which are accessible and have low barriers for entry. Thirdly, in the environment, we should find learners who have access to effective ways of providing feedback and help. In other words, the focus of the environment is learning oriented and peers support each other as they create, refine and experiment with their learning. A connected learning environment, like what we're going to map in assignment one, is not something that's based around a business or making money and it's not generally centred around one person or hosted by one person or a small group of people that then many other people join in into. It's usually far more distributed than that. Lots of individuals working on their own projects that all have shared uh, purposes and interests with each other. They find each other in the online environment and connect that way, rather than having one single space where lots of people come in and one person has created that space. The best way to explain what a connected learning environment looks like is by using an example. Let's look at the study blur community. How did I come across this community and what is it all about? Okay, here's the story. Having almost completed my PhD, I've just spent three years studying in front of my computer. Sometimes you do need a brain break and during my internet wanderings, I came across the study blah community. This is a community that's dedicated to students who are reaching out to others for motivation to study and to learn how to be a better learner. They share study strategies, inspirational quotes, note taking tips, study schedules, lots and lots of templates and printables and instructions on how to make your diary and notes as aesthetically pleasing as possible. You can see why I found myself sometimes mindlessly scrolling through images of beautiful stationery, gorgeous libraries and inspirational quotes. For a brain dead PhD student, it was a lovely place to find some distraction. Study Blur is a network which emerged initially on Tumblr, hence its name, which is a combination of study and Tumblr. An article published on the Verge website quotes Study Blur, a study blur known as Gato Studies, who says, at first glance, it just looks like colourful notes and pretty calligraphy, but if you look harder, you can see that it's so much more than that. There's so many tools that students all over the world can benefit from, and study blogging makes all of that available at the click of your mouse. Study Blur has expanded from Tumblr, although this is still the most popular space for study blurs. So you can see study blurs and study focused blogs and groups on Facebook, on Twitch, on YouTube, on Pinterest, on Instagram. Here's some examples. On, oh, on Facebook, you can see that there's lots and lots of study groups and they use the word study blur as a way of finding each other within Facebook. 
So obviously there's always been a lot of people who group together for study, but study blur means that the individuals know that when they connect with that group of people, they're going to find students who are interested in study and motivating themselves for study, but who also have particular focuses on things like decorating their diaries, taking notes in beautiful ways, having a wide range of beautiful stationery, or maybe they may not have all those things, but they really like all those things and they like to look at pictures of those things. Twitch is a space where mostly people meet up to talk about games and gaming and the Stumbler, study blur community on Twitch is quite small but you can find occasional study blurs on Twitch where people have study sessions and they'll video themselves with their study and then meet up with other people who are studying at the same time and connect with each other via their own videos and you can see here there's several videos overlaid on each other and below when the when the actual session is happening there's a conversation uh, chat room happening at the same time as well youtube has a lot of different places for study blurs and you can see here an example of different videos that people have produced where they are sharing how they have set up their journal how they take notes the types of uh, illustrations and calligraphy that they use, demonstrating all of the types of things that study blurs really like to focus on and almost pro procrastinate with when they're, when they're studying. Pinterest is an obvious area where lots and lots of study blurs collect images and uh, lists and curated collections of different ways to enhance and motivate yourself when you're studying. Study blurs also find themselves using hashtags. The hashtag is often a very powerful connector across the different spaces of the openly network connected learning environment. So here we have not just hashtag study blur, which is by far the most common uh, hashtag, but we also have things like study spo and study inspo, both which indicate inspiration for studying. Hashtag am studying to describe that you're right now currently studying and this is what you're doing at the time. Uh, hashtag productivity to describe different ways of motivating yourself to be more productive. And hashtag on my desk, which are usually photographs of what's happening on your desk or the way that you've set up your study space in order to motivate and inspire other people. So how do we know that study blur is a connected learning environment and not just a random grouping of individuals who are all students and who are all focusing on their study? Let's use those, uh, those criteria that we went through before. Is it interest driven and shared and does it ha do the members of the community have a shared purpose? Yes. For example, Jessica Slaughter has written a blog post and I asked her permission if I could reproduce um, some parts of her blog post. And she says on there, every day I'm reading posts from real people who are going through the same struggles as me, feeling stressed out about a test, getting piled with homework, staying up until 3 a.m. finishing a project, etc. And there's something nice about having a community that totally understands you. So the interest driven aspect of this environment is that all of the people in the community are students or learning in some respect or they're studying something. And the shared purpose is that they're trying to find motivation and strategies to improve um, their studying and to make their studying experience more enjoyable and a little less uh, full of drudgery and and uh, grey and brown and bring in a bit of beauty and aesthetics into the process. Secondly, is Study Blur a production centred, openly networked, connected learning environment? Yes, it is. Study Blurs create lots and lots of things. It's actually a strange combination of offline and online content creation. Study Blurs curate and create offline paper resources. For example, they collect lots and lots of beautiful and different stationery. They might collect lots and lots of notebooks and bullet journals. They print out lots and lots of uh, calendars and, and uh, study schedules and things like that. 
but they also then have the digital aspects because they take photos of all of these things and they create uh, they use particular filters to create photos with a particular look they create videos they create podcasts they create playlists of music to study to they create and share these printable uh, templates with others so yes there is a production centered focus and it is openly networked because we can see how all of those different uh, styles of production and all of those different spaces for sharing these things um, are easily accessible and openly accessible. So you don't need to pay anything to get onto Tumblr and start creating your study blog. You don't need to have much more than your computer and your webcam in order to create a video tutorial that you can then upload to YouTube. Um, it is each of these things connect into each other they're networked in together so you might make a YouTube video and then you might share it on your study blog through tumblr then you might have add add this to your curated collection on Pinterest so you can see how the all of these different online spaces are not only openly connect work, networked in the fact that they're open to the world and accessible to the individual but they also connect in with each other they're not uh, walled gardens like for example our blackboard site is in at university where you need to be a student of a particular place and have particular password access in order to uh, get into that space thirdly is study blood learning oriented and peer supported well study blood is definitely learning oriented because it, it's even in the name study blur but it's not just about studying it's not that everyone is joining in to study a particular subject it's that people are learning about how to study better um, except for the times when study blood is actually used for procrastination and uh, like me finding a lot of uh, reward just scrolling through pretty pictures of of, uh, pe of people's really well designed notebooks and uh, really lovely inspirational study spaces the whole idea is to enhance learning by making study more fun and by connecting with others who are studying to provide support, encouragement and to share ideas about how to improve as a student. Within the stu study blur community, most people freely share their templates and resources. The community is not business based. It's not centered around a single person or a site. That doesn't mean that some people don't necessarily make money from their study blah activities. For example, sometimes people sell their templates uh, through Etsy, but usually this is a very small side effect rather than an immediate goal or a common part of hosting a study blah blog. It's very much peer supported in the fact that when you uh, go into a study blah uh, blog, you'll see comments and interactions that are happening that are very much focused on supporting and being positive uh, and, and recognizing that we're all in this studying business and all in this student business together. So I have actually linked together um, and put on Padlet all of the different examples that I've used and some of the articles that I've used just in case you're interested in pursuing uh, study blah or in just finding out a little bit more about it so that you can understand the connected learning environment a little bit better but that should give you an overview of the types of things you should be looking for when you're selecting your connected learning environment now it doesn't have to be focused around learning and academia it can be focused around a hobby a craft a sport it can be focused around um, writing creative writing or anything at all um, it doesn't it the main thing is that it isn't business based that the, the it is a learning community and that it's not one single space that's hosted by one person or a small group of people that lots of other people have come into that it's distributed across multiple spaces like you can see the study blood community is so I hope that that helps clarify a little bit uh, the connected learning environment that you'll be finding that you'll be finding when you do assignment one. Good luck with it, and uh, remember, we're all, I'm always here to chat further about it. And we are all learning together in our own connected learning community. Bye bye.